we're going to have a look at resealing a uh, Sims injector pump that's on this Nuffield, but they're found on numerous tractors, so uh, it'll be quite useful to see what you can do. And uh, in the Sims pump, there is numerous seals. Some have one at the back. They all have one at the front, up here. But what I'm particularly looking at is the seal here on the throttle shaft, and there's another one on the back. And as you can see on this pump, it's all wet around here, and it's dripped down onto the chassis. And uh, if you've got a good paint job, you get all this oil and it attracts dirt and it also stains the paint. So it can be quite a pain. So we're going to have a look at replacing these seals. They're uh, quite cheap and readily available. They're only uh, less than a pound. I'll show you where you can get them later. But first of all, we have to get the injector pump off the uh, tractor. So I'll go and get some spanners and get it removed. Right, I've removed the injector pipes and put some caps on, the air filter and I've also removed the three bolts holding the injector pump, one here, one at the back and one at the bottom. Under each nut there's a washer which doesn't come off immediately, it will fall to the ground when I take the pump off so watch out for them and don't lose them. But before I remove the pump I've turned the engine to the 25 degree timing mark on the flywheel so that when we put it back we know where we are. So let's have a look at the flywheel now. Now the engine's on the 25 degree mark, the pointer on the coupling lines up with the mark there. We're now ready to remove the pump. The last thing is to remove the bracket underneath that steadies it to the engine block. There's uh, a couple of little bolts. And the bolt underneath, you have to just loosen the starter motor so you can draw this bolt out the bottom, otherwise it hits the starter. And then the whole injector pump will slide off. I should do. You just heard the little washers fall to the ground. There's a washer on each thread that doesn't come off when you remove the nut and they tend to fall to the ground afterwards. Here's the one from the back. There's another one on the floor. That's the injector pump off. When you come to refit the injector pump, it will only go back in one position because there's a stud on the coupling and there's a hole here. And you notice that the other orifices do not have a hole. So it will only go back in one position. And that injector pump, you can remove and refit as many times as you want. As long as you don't slacken the coupling clamps at the front here, you will not alter the timing. It comes off and goes back on again. No problem whatsoever. If you have a later tractor like a Nuffield 465 or a Leyland, they have a different setup and you have to disengage your gear in the timing case and when you refit it you have to refer to timing marks on the back of the pump and put pins in the flywheel. It's all quite complicated and really at the end of the day you'd have been better off buying a 1060. Right, we're in the workshop now. I've um, given the pump a clean down with the airline and a wire brush to get the dirt off it but I'm not going to strip all the paint off it like a uh, proper recon because I like to keep it looking how it uh, left the factory. Um, I've never done this before so it'll be quite interesting to see how it goes. I've bought myself a little swivel vice to make it easier to work on and got some soft jaws to hold it. So let's have a look at what we're going to do. First of all we come to this side and I need to slacken the clamp holding that arm and that one. And then if I give that a tap with a hammer, that should go through a little bit. Yeah, that's moved. Now, we'll look at the other side. Take this circlip off. One circlip, one washer, and in here, is the worn seal which feels quite hard
Well, guess what? That doesn't want to come out, so I'm going to have to get a little spike or something, or some implement to, uh, so we'll come back to this in a few minutes. I finally got the seal out, I ended up grinding a screwdriver down to less than a millimetre across and picking the seal out. Push it into place with a screwdriver, let's see how this goes. There's the new seal back in place and we can put the washer, I don't know which way that, I think it was that way around. Just push the shaft from the other side to get it through. That's one seal replaced. So now we can concentrate on the other side, which is round here. I think I'll lock the vise now to stop it uh, spinning. Uh, just get a rag and clean my hands. Now, before we take this side off, we need to make sure that this goes back in exactly the same position because this affects the revs it'll either have too many revs or too little revs so i've got a scriber here and i'll just scratch a line across the end of there in line with the lever and then that can come off should slide off That's the first one off, and then the second one. We'll stop it level with the end of the shaft and we'll scratch the same line across that. got another circlip. Wash up. Beveled washer or whatever you call it as a spring. Another wash up. And there's the seal, so uh, I think we'll stop filming for a minute while I extract that like I did the other side, because it takes a little while. Well, I've finally persuaded the second seal into place with a tip of a screwdriver. They just take a bit of getting in, but they do go in eventually. There's no trick to it, it's just hard work. I can now put the washers and circlips back. So there's the first washer and the spring washer. Second washer. Get the circlip back in. I think there's a trick to this, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the circlip off the back again and bring the shaft through a little bit. And see if I can get the front one in and then I can squash it the other way. So uh, we'll stop filming for a minute while I have a play with this. Right, I've sussed it now. The trick is to replace this side first, put the spring washer and circlip back on and then you can push the shaft up and compress the spring and get the circlip on the back. So now we've done that we can put the levers back on. Now the first one
goes like that. And tighten the bolt, and then the second one. Hmm, I think I'm a spline out there. Let's try it. No, it's definitely there. There we go, all done. Two new seals in, replaced the little rubbers. Uh, I'll put a picture up at the end of where you can buy these uh, rubbers to reseal your pump. But there we're all done, ready to go back on. So remember, if you've got a leaky shaft that drips and causes embarrassing stains, perhaps you should try a new rubber. Happy trap everybody.